Okay, what I'm going to do uh, today is show you how, when you're reading an article, to look for the three main things in terms of analysis that we're always looking for. So one is um, we want to try to understand what is this author's main point. Secondly, what is his purpose or her purpose in writing it? And thirdly, is there any bias to this? So by bias, um, we can sometimes see that from a point of view. Maybe the author uh, is presenting their own point of view. We'll know that if they use words like I um, or maybe even you. Those are kind of transparent giveaways. But <clears throat> oftentimes in a news article, that is not the case. And instead, what we have to look for are the point of views of the sources that are used within um, the document. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk about here as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and read this and do some analysis um, as we go along. I've already taken some notes over here on the right-hand side that you'll see in my comments. Frontline healthcare workers and elderly residents of long-term care facilities will receive the very first COVID-19 vaccinations, a Center for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, advisory board recommended Tuesday. All right, we're going to pause right there because in a typical news story like this, um, we know that anything related to the coronavirus um, is going to be quite serious. So this is this kind of falls into that um, into that hard news category. And of course, the W's of the story present themselves right away in the in the opening. So I know that this is about a vaccination. I also kind of knew that from the uh, headline as well. But I know that the vaccination, it's been decided, will go to um, people taking care of others, the healthcare workers. It's also going to go to people in these elderly um, care homes, these long-term care homes. So what what we used to be, what we used to call nursing homes. Um, okay, we also know that this has been decided by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. Okay, and that they made this decision on Tuesday uh, of this week. All right, so as we go on, um, I'm going to look for now more information that will explore more of this who, maybe any of those groups, the healthcare workers, more about the older people, maybe more about the CDC. So the what, the decision, this decision about who would get the first vaccines. Um, maybe I might even find out a little bit more about the vaccines. So as a reader, what I want to do is basically do what you just heard me do, is to kind of predict what I'm going to hear more about or what I'm going to see more about in the article. These groups will make up phase 1A of the USA vaccine recipients who will receive the first 40 million or so doses that could be available by the end of the year. Uh, that's actually a lot of information there. So I probably need to stop and talk about that for a second. I just learned that this is going to come in phases and this will only be the first phase and that this medicine, this vaccination is going to arrive before the end of the year. Remember, this was just delivered on December 1st. I can see the date line right here, uh, December 1st. So in less than 30 days, this is happening quite fast. This is something that we've been waiting for since last March, um, and this is happening fast. Okay, so it says here that the Food and Drug Administration is currently reviewing two vaccines, all right, and that they are from Pfizer Biotech, uh, Fire, Pfizer BioNTech and Moderna. Okay, so I just learned something there. I always thought these are two different companies. They're not. They're one and the same. So I'm glad I'm reading closely here. <clears throat> Pfizer BioNTech and Moderna are the two um, companies, okay, that are making these vaccines. According to the CDC, there are about 21 million healthcare workers. Well, this is some factual information that I need to be thinking about. 21 million healthcare workers, including people who work in hospitals, long-term care facilities, home health care, pharmacies, emergency medical services, as well as in the public health, and about 3 million older Americans living in skilled nursing or long-term care facilities. Wow. Okay, so let's just sum up. And this is what you should always do as a reader is kind of like sum up all your facts, right? So we know that the vaccines are coming from two different companies, BioNTech and Moderna. If you'll notice, I'm looking in the camera. I'm not actually looking down at the document. What I want to do is I want to use this memory of mine, right? So you heard me talk aloud while I read. That's a great strategy. 
even when I have to do it silently, I talk out loud inside my head. So then I can kind of hear the voice and that helps my memory. But if I can do it, actually do it out loud like I'm doing right here, man, does that really help. So I'm telling you from my own memory, I remember the Moderna is one company. And why am I memorizing these? Because these are facts. All right, these are the facts of the story that 21 million people work in healthcare. That's huge. That there are 3 million elderly people in these um, facilities is also huge. These are big numbers. I don't want to forget those. Another fact is this is only the first phase and the vaccinations will arrive to start this phase by the end of this month, by the end of December, because it said the end of the year. Okay. Um, I also just want to remind everybody that this decision was made on Tuesday. I'm given this video, by the way, on Thursday. So this was just two days ago. Today's December 3rd. This decision was made on December 1st. All right. Over the nearly four hour meeting, the committee discussed, oh, excuse me, I skipped this, the 13 to one vote by the CDC's advisory committee on immunization practices was the first official step toward prioritizing who will get the scarce first doses of any COVID-19 vaccine. Over the nearly four hour meeting, the committee discussed in detail who within these two priority groups would get access first when doses are limited early on. For example, the committee wanted to ensure that people who work directly in providing patient care will be first in line. Um, you'll notice I stop at the end of every paragraph. At the end of every paragraph, um, I sum up in my head basically what I just read. And so what I just read right there was really interesting because when they voted at the CDC, there was 14 people involved in the vote. 13 voted to go ahead and do this and to give it to these people first, the healthcare workers, 21 million of them, and the 3 million people in the, in the uh, elderly care situations. But what was interesting about that is one person dissented. I'm going to kind of remember that because I, I think I find that, that number to be very interesting. So it was 13 to 1. That was the vote. Um, something else that was really interesting in there is that, um, that the people amongst all of the healthcare workers that are going to get it. The first of those people to get it are the ones who are in direct care to patients. So I can imagine then that nurses who are working in hospitals who have direct access um, to, to their patients will get this first so that they're not spreading it to them. This makes a lot of sense. All right. The reasons for focusing on healthcare workers and long-term care residents include both the potential for magnifying the impact of the vaccination uh, and then you see this colon, that means that there's an explanation that's about to come. If the healthcare workers are protected, they will be able to continue working and caring for more people with COVID-19 as cases continue to spread across the country. Ah, uh, okay, so further explanation. Um, if I'm a nurse or a doctor and I'm caring for somebody with COVID, if I get the disease because I didn't get a vaccination, now not only may I might be in trouble because I wasn't vaccinated, but so too might the patients that I normally care for. Those COVID-19 people are getting less care, therefore they're in more danger. So that's, that's the explanation. All right, um, the reason why I'm stopping to do this is because the whys are so, so critical. The why, the reasons, okay? Um, I'm just going to do just a little bit more, and then I want to go click on some of these notes I have over here. Okay, there's some more facts that are, that are interesting. Um, only 1% of the U.S. population actually lives in a long-term care center. Only 1% of the entire population. And yet, during this pandemic, 40% of the deaths have been from those people living in those long care uh, facilities, the older people living in the long care facilities, okay? Uh, by the way, long care means that they're probably going to be there till they die. So it's the rest of their elderly years, typically, not always, but typically. Okay. Um, I believe my vote in favor of the recommendation reflects maximizing benefit, minimizing harm, promoting justice, and mitigating health inequities. Dr. Jose Romero, the committee chair, said in explaining his support of priority groups. Well, this is pretty normal in a uh, news story. We get a quote. Uh, in fact, it, it actually took us a little while to get to that quote, but there it is, a quote from a primary source. The primary source is a doctor who actually voted on this, and he's explaining why he voted on it. All right. Um, 
It tells what's going to happen next. The recommendation is going to go to the director of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, who does not have to accept it, but likely will. So this is a lot like um, the Senate and the House in Washington, D.C. They vote on something. It goes to the president. Um, we kind of know when the president's going to agree with it and uh, or if he may not. So this is a very similar situation. I like to do what you just heard me do, which is create analogies so that I can understand a little bit better um, by comparing it to Washington, D.C. and how the uh, Congress works with the White House, um, I understand now that the panel that was making this decision, uh, the committee that was making this decision, having to send it to the director of the CDC, kind of like a president, it just helps me remember it and understand it a little bit better, okay? All right, uh, if he goes on to accept it, they're gonna start making decisions on how to allocate the anticipated 6.4 million doses that will be the first batch released within the days of the FDA authorizing a vaccine. They will probably go to hospitals where healthcare workers are most concentrated, as well as to pharmacies that have contracted with long-term care facilities to administer shots to residents and staff. All right, um, so let's just, what I'm gonna do right now is just show you some notes I already took on this, okay? This is just a little bit more of the what, um, how they're going to have to monitor side effects and so forth. When we get down to this part right here, um, it explains how that will happen. They're actually going to be using a texting-based system on smartphones. Okay, well, that's, okay, so that's interesting. So part of this, this decision is that as the vaccine goes out to these healthcare workers and to those elderly people, well, being part of the people that first get the vaccine means that they also have to do these check-ins um, with these smartphone-based texting systems. So that's going to be expected of them so that we so that we keep monitoring how well the vaccine is working. All right. So that makes sense. That's what this paragraph is about. What I love about the next two paragraphs, okay, what I love about these is that this is about the dissenting vote. So the one person, Dr. Helen Talbot, who voted against it. She explains why. And I'm just gonna sum that up for you because what she says in here is um, that one, she doesn't really believe that the healthcare workers or even the elderly people um, have the means, including the time. She's saying, you know, these healthcare workers are so stressed out. How in the world are they ever gonna have the time to be able to do these check-ins and do all this monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. Um, she also doesn't believe that it has been proven um, as effective as the other voters thought it had been proven. So again, I'm not going to read that out loud. I've already read that. That's me summing it up. And what am I trying to do? I'm trying to show you that you constantly have to sum up what you're reading. You just have to constantly sum it up. So we're going to stop right there, okay? And um, if I were going to go to a, another document, I'm going to have you guys watch me do this here. and. In this document, I want to basically state the three things I'm always trying to state, okay? So number one is author's purpose, right? Well, that's an easy one. The purpose was to inform me about that day's decision from... Now, me, I should not say that, actually. I should be more specific about the audience. Inform, uh, this was printed in Time Magazine, okay? So I'm going to say Time Magazine's readers. About the, about the, day's, the day's decision from the uh, CDC concerning the who would get, who will get the first batch of the vaccine. Okay. Um, and why? All right. That's it. Um, that's what this author is just trying to get across. So the other two questions that always come up are, of course, main point. Okay. So now the main point, because I keep saying it over and over again, it's probably going to seem to be like, this is so flipping obvious, right? But the main point, I actually didn't write it up in here because this is not the same thing as, as purpose. But the main point is that healthcare workers and um, elderly 
in what are called long-term uh, long care facilities will get the first um, we'll get the first doses. Okay. Now, the um, last thing that we want to talk about is something called point of view. And if you recall, um, there are like three different kinds of point of view. First, second, third. First means um, first person point of view is you say, I, I did this. I'm getting the vaccine. I'm going to give the vaccine. I voted this way. But that's not what happened here. So no, it was more they, it was more they and he and she. So that would be third person. So I want to make that really clear. That was third person. But I also want to make a point that um, both sides of the issue were addressed. Um, th this is not a singular point of view. There's, there's two. Uh, this is what we might call balanced and fair reporting. Because, because we have um, a doctor who voted for it. And I'm going to say the vaccine decision just to keep this short. And the doctor who voted against it. The one dissenting voice. They got it in there. Um, and so really, this, uh, this is something that we would call a balanced point of view. It is a balanced point of view um, on the matter. Okay, it is, um, there, the bias is absent. The bias is absent. There, it, it seems as though a lot of information was given to the, a lot of print was given to, to the dissenter. I'm going to show you that right now so you guys understand what that I mean. This is all the person dissenting. So it's hard to argue um, when you see all of that, that uh, the article was not taking into consideration why somebody might be against this happening okay so there's a there's more to this as well but i want to wrap it up right there because i don't want this to go on too long so i'm going to come back to here and this is what we always do there's my author's purpose right there um this is uh whoa that's not what i wanted to happen sorry about that uh i wanted this to happen okay there i wanted to highlight that and then my main point right here Okay, again, the main point is who will get the vaccine? I spell it out right there, healthcare workers and elderly. Um, and, you know, you could, it, exactly what you say isn't that important. I could say by end of year, because I do think that was important. So I'll add that on there. Um, always look back over your writing, look back over your answers. Don't be afraid to revise them and edit them a little bit. They'll probably be, end up being better. Um, here again is my point of view. And I want to point out that with point of view, we always take in, uh, into account, is it saying I or we? Is it saying you, that second person? Or is it saying he, she, they, naming doctors and so forth? That would be third person. Okay. Um, and then we also want to get at the bias. We always want to get at that bias. Um, is it present? And in this case, it is a good news story because it has both, both points of view on both sides of the issue. If it had not had the dissenter, I would have had to say that the bias was completely um, pro-vaccine uh, decision, you know, going towards the elderly and the healthcare workers. Uh, that was roughly worded, but you get the point. Okay, um, thanks for watching, and I hope this really helps.